online so today i'm going to explain and discuss with you about how to conduct logistic regression using spss so for this particular exercise and tutorial i'm going to use the titanic data set that already been gathered from the open source uh, in the internet for those who are interested to join this particular session you can download the example of the data set in the provided link in um, our description below Okay, after you download the data set, we have to uh, understand the variable that indicated in this particular data. So the first one, we got the ID, we got the passenger class. So we got three type of class, class one, class two, class three is indicated here. And then we got the survival status, which is number zero indicated not survive, number one indicated survive. So in this um, particular session, we are going to identify the probability, the chances for the people to survive in the titanic ships during the disaster and then we got male and female as gender which is number one indicated as male number two indicated as female and then proceed with the age and fair as the numerical or we call it as the scale um, data set all right so to run logistic regression you have to proceed with the analyze and then proceed with the regression and then proceed with the binary logistic analyze regression and binary logistics after you go to the binary logistics we are going to predict our survival status therefore our dependent list or dependent variable should be inserted the survive um, attributes here and then in our covariate we have to put our passenger class and also the gender as our covariate to indicate the possible uh, factors that might influence the probability of the surviving during the um, titanic disaster in this particular example i'm going to insert only these two covariate and then perhaps uh, we can adjust this particular model by arrange it or insert another variable such as each and fair in the next particular discussion and then um, to complete the logistic regression um, session or logistic regression model, we have to proceed with the categorical radio button. So these categorical radio buttons are very important, especially if you got categorical data. Example, in this case, we got passenger class and then we got the gender as our um, categorical data. So the passenger class indicator here, as default, the computer are going to set it as last, as the reference points. That means the passenger class number one and two will be discussed in the output of this particular videos. And the passenger class number three will be using as the indicator. So in our gender, also the same, which is number one, indicate male, number two, indicate female. So if we remain as default, that means we are going to discuss about the male survivability. But I'm not going to do that. Therefore, we can change that one into first. That means the SPSS are going to understand that our reference now refer to the male instead of female. Therefore, the output being produced after this are going to be focused on female respondent and then we proceed with the continue radio button and then go to the option and then you can choose two important um, categorical sorry uh, two checkbox here namely has uh, host model measure and also 95 percent confident intervals and then proceed with the continue and then proceed with the ok radio button after a certain uh, period of time, the output of the SPSS are going to be produced for you and we are going to learn how to make the interpretation together. Okay, this is the output of my data based on the Titanic data set. Let us discuss about this output together. Okay, after you run the logistic regression, we can see this is the case uh, processing summary uh, indicated the value of not surviving as zero and survive as number one. And then the categorical variable coding are indicated here, which is uh, parameter indicated as number one and number one and class three as number zero because this is our reference. Same also to the gender, which is our reference will be the male. So the beginning block zero is actually being um, explained as the null, null of our output, null of our uh, model. So in this model, we can see the correct classification indicated 59.2. This is um, classification tables that are very important to identify the goodness of fit 
that are going to be produced by our model in the block number one which is this is block number zero which is our null and then we are going to be interested in our block number one which is our uh, model block so this is our model block so as you can see here block number one method enter the omnibus test for uh, of, uh, mod model coefficient indicate the fitness of the model in this particular example, we can see the value is less than 0 0.05. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis and give the conclusions the uh, model fit. Actually, the model omnibus test for the model coefficients talking about the fitting the model. So, we have to be, I mean, feel happy because our models are um, have sufficient evidence to suggest this is a fit model between the dependent variables and our covariates and then we can see that this is a model summary um, the most important part here is Negrekel R square for example because this is the pseudo R it is not the um, relevant R per se in our linear regression but this is sufficient enough to justify the the accumulations effect of our uh, predictors towards our um, predicted capacity of the survivability and then we has we, we has the hosmer lemershaw test so for your information hosmer lemershaw test in my opinion is not really satisfactory because the best hosmer lemershaw test should indicate the significant level um, to be more than 0 0.05 this this sig value should be more than 0 0.05 that's mean uh, we have the evidence that the model is fit also based on the hosmer lemershaw test statistic but in this particular example i think we can sort of satisfy with these um, assumptions because uh, omnibus test is uh, satisfactory and um, quite quite a number of negrical r square which is our pseudo r square also indicate um, higher number of uh, predicted ability and then we have the contingency table for Hosmer Lemershaw, which is uh, usually people will look at this, the, the, the number of the steps and then the last steps will be predicted in what kind of um, disparity or the the changes, which is in this case, 128 minus 119 is equivalent something to do with, um, I think it's around, um, what is the difference between this thing? 128 minus... 128 minus 119 is equivalent to 9. We got 9 differences here. So it's not really, really accurate, but it's, it's kind of giving you some idea that, okay, this is um, the ability of it got some misclassified according to the nine uh, different categories but it's still acceptable okay and then the classification table here indicate the percentage of correct is more than zero uh, is more than 70 percent that's mean it is very good it's a, it's a, it's kind of a satisfactory condition where we have the initial percentage on the block zero is 59 and now it's become 77.9 so we can suggest that this is a satisfactory model also and then the most important is our uh, variable in the equations where we discuss the passenger class we discuss the gender only only these two factors is one of the uh, important independent variables to justify the ability of the survival uh, surviving in your um, titanic ships during the disaster okay if you can see here the p class uh, in the bracket one that is actually indicated the passenger class number one okay so this is the idea of the passenger class number one the exponential b is actually talking about the or the odd ratio okay we are going to discuss about the odd ratio later on but uh, to simplify this particular video i'm just going to say that uh, for those um staying in the passenger class number one they got the survivability out around five as compared to the other uh, passenger class number three because uh, we asked the SPSS to make a reference of our analysis based on the passenger class number three okay and then um, same also goes to the passenger class number two which is in the passenger class number two we can see um, the odd of surviving is 2.2 .2, which is um, if you stay in the passenger class number two you got uh, the odd of chances to be survive um, is particularly two times um, higher than those who are in the passenger class number three so that is uh, what we are talking about in the um, 
logistic regression models. We are talking about the chances, the probabilities of occurrence, the probability of survival. In this case, we are talking about probability of survival, which is how many times you can survive as compared to a um, certain group. So in this case, 5.5 times um, survive as compared to the uh, odds of those um, in the passenger class number 3. And then this one is 2.2 uh, um, times um, odds uh, passenger class number 3. And then uh, we are going to focus on the next um, example of the factors which is we call it as gender. So gender indicate um, the exponential B or we call it as the odd ratio is equal to 12.530. So that's mean 12.3 uh, 12 times odd um, for those uh, female uh, chances. I mean the chances of you to be survived in the Titanic disaster if you are female you have 12.5 odds as compared to uh, you are male in this particular case. So this is the robust technique of uh, superficial model to understand how the logistic regression can can help you to identify uh, the probability of the risk, the element of the chances um, to get something. In this case, uh, the chances to be safe, the chances to be survive in uh, the uh, during the disaster. Um, session so uh, I hope this uh, simple video can can give you some ideas about um, how to run the logistic regression and perhaps in the next uh, videos I'm going to explain about how you can control this variable by inserting another um, factors for example we can insert the age we can also insert the fair um, and then we have a look about the changes of the exponential b or the odd ratio whether it is the same or it is some some changes occur in this particular model so that we can sort of justify our crude odd and also our adjusted odd okay with that um, i ended this video for a while and then we continue again later on thank you don't forget to subscribe bye bye